I'm in. I'm at work today. Mm-hmm. And you know, like work's been like freaking crazy or whatever. Yeah. But I actually got some chance to like listen to like some podcasts and stuff like that. And um, and it was I was watching Brilliant Idiots and they started talking about like, like kind of like this social media, real life kind of thing. So, essentially, it came down to this. It was um, how we we basically like compare. We start to compare our lives, our real lives. To everybody's highlight reel, mm-hmm. you get me? Like, you know how everybody in social media they post like the best, like you know, like they post like the best of the best, right? Yeah. Like if you think about it, like, like um. So I don't post pictures when I'm in depth. Right, but no. E- e- even if you post a selfie, you don't post the self, the first selfie. Yeah. You post like the yeah. best. Yeah. And filters. Or, like yeah, and then, and then you know, the you take a selfie. bunch of them, and, like yeah. you take a bunch of them, and you post them. So it got me thinking about like, yo, it's kind of true, like. Um, kind of what we were talking about like last, like on, on Saturday, like kind of the things that we kind of want are, are things that we, like I don't know, like, I guess like the goals or something that we aim for, like are these things like something that we really want or are these things that we're looking for validation for, you know what I mean? Like, cause think about it, like, like, even if, it, like, okay, like a social media, right? You post a picture, I had this conversation with a girl and she's like, no, I don't do it for validation. I don't do it for nothing. I just do it cause like, you know. It's like, um, to post or whatever, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, that's, that's not true. Like, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like, like, if you're on social media, whatever it is that you do, like, whether it's a retweet, whether whatever, it's almost like, you know, because you feel like somebody's going to fuck with mm-hmm. it, you get me? You feel like somebody's going to like it, or you feel like somebody's going to retweet, or mm-hmm. somebody's going to do something, you get me? So it's like, it's like, essentially, like, what are we aiming for in life, period? So you yeah, like, purpose? I was perfectly huh. people would talk. I thought we were gonna talk about like, yo, what's wrong with the streets? So, like, you could talk about what. what that is streets? definitely a deep talk. That's why I, I yeah. my face. You know what I'm <laughs> Just in case Nick's trying to find me. But I mean, like, I don't know. It got me thinking. Like, it, it, I just for me, it just got me to think because um, what are we aiming for? Like, what's that? What's the goal and why? Is that I your think, thinking face? I think it's like uh, <laughs> tell me, I look so. <laughs> <laughs> I look small. <laughs> like, what do we saw? This is puffy jacket. No, but like, does it make me look strong? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, is it independent? Does it make me look independent? <laughs> yes, I guess. I don't live in my grandma's house no more. <laughs> Alright? Don't tell them that. Alright, buddy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I got a little bit of thought. But, uh, yeah, I think. I don't know, is that. Like, you know how we all say that? Like, oh, you know, social media kind of just. It's like a platform where you show the best side of you. But I think, you know, since everybody's doing it, people feel compelled like they have to do it too. Like, you know, like nobody goes on social media and will like hashtag real me. And like when you wake up in the morning with your hot breath and your messed up hair, yeah. you, know, you know, you have, you first you showered and you put your gel on and you put a filter yeah, on. Because I just you know, pick up like, the gel. Like, <laughs> you, need you know, and so the whole idea is, is like, I, I guess no there's no like it's not a platform to to really show your life. It's a platform to show the best version of you. Yeah, fake it yeah. till you make it. Yeah. yeah, essentially, which I don't know. It's not even there because like think about the Bawa challenge. It was just faking it continuously. <laughs> yeah, Bawa what well, that that was pretty bad. And he couldn't even explain it himself. Yeah. He was like he was like, like man money. Why do you keep doing that? Well, well don't, don't I mean money. yeah, he has money to like some extent, but now like I have my own private jet. I know one of y'all wanted cornrows when y'all saw like Mike. Nah. No? I like Mike Rito. I wanted the Jay's though. I wanted shoes. I didn't even know what Jay Z had. No, I think he had like forces. Yeah, Mikey, right? They were forces. For real? I think so. See I'm the forces? Guy. <laughs> He's a Google. I don't know there were forces though. They look like forces. Yeah. But why would he say... Or like, like, you like see, they were maybe forces. blue. No, they weren't, they weren't ones though. They're, I think they were just some Nike joints. Or... What, were they Converse? No. Nah, uh, they were maybe blue yeah, and white. I don't know. Yeah. They're just some Nike joints probably. Some Nike Yeah, joints? so I just tell you, Chris, right now how, how... I'm starting to realize though, more and more, how the more I like rewatch these podcasts, I'm like, yo, we have so much airplanes. Going through this, and the airplane just passed by right now. It's my I don't know what you want me to do. We have a pretty big airport. Shit. Airport. Yeah, like, big airport. Every time. Well, if you had your own soundproof studio, we would have these problems. Don't worry, I'm going to talk to the. Yo, give with me a Berman. minute. 
I'm gonna talk to Birdman so that he can send us to, to your <laughs> money. Birdman? No, we're not gonna get paid ever. That would burn money. We're not getting paid ever. At least you know me. At, at least we got. No, we're not getting paid ever. We don't get students on, though. Nah, man. No, you're not. You don't pay no bills because you don't get paid. You know what I mean? So we're gonna get free students at all the time. No, we're not. We're gonna get sued and <laughs> fine. That's yeah, what we're what gonna what get. The hell are these? Fine, fine. I'm gonna get my sword. We're not OVO. Oh, they're blazers. Terrible blazers. I told you it was like white and baby blue, I remember well, that. Well, Virgil's bringing those blazers back. Yeah, these are the blazers. And like, so I mean, I, so even though today though, like, like as, as far as that, like, I'm trying to remember more about what I was like, um, like what they were getting at, because a lot of it was just like, I just, it started correlating with me as far as like, what, like, damn, but it's like, you know, like, I, like at 22, right? I didn't write that, right? 23, about to be 24, I'm about to be 23, you're about to be 22. And we're at that age where it's just, we're trying to, fi- I'm about to be 23, about to be 22. Oh, alright, like, damn, maybe. You know, so, we're at that stage now where it's like, you know, we're figuring it out, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like we're, we're, we're also at a place where if we compare ourselves to, like, you know, what we're seeing on social media, because it's something that we're constantly on, like, we're constantly on our phones, that... It almost causes like, like this kind of anxiety and this worry that like, yo, I'm not what I'm supposed to be. Do you ever feel like that? Like, like you ever feel like, oh, I'm not what I'm supposed to be right now? Yeah, but not because of social media. Well, maybe that. Well, well, what do you mean? Because remember, I don't really, I don't, I don't do like on social media. Remember, like I enjoy Twitter, but Twitter I enjoy it for either challenging the way I see things or for comedy. I guess like, so people there. But I don't go on social media to like see what somebody's doing. Like, you know, like today I was even going through. Through the I'm down IG because I noticed I don't even like the stuff we post. Oh, so I was like, I, I was like, you know what? I was like, let me go back to that joke. Yeah, yeah. I like like, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that shows to you that I'm not really like on like, Instagram on liking on stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I do feel yeah, like it's my stuff. Like uh, I tend to look at either people's lives or, or my own thought of how I saw my life was gonna play out mm-hmm. and, and I start feeling like insecure about where I'm at. And I start feeling una- like unaccomplished. You know, even to a sense of like you know, like, uh, if we're honest, I kind of like like a failure sometimes. Because yeah. I had, like, this idea of where I was supposed to be uh, at. You know, uh, you know, part of it is society, part of it is my own, like, pride, and part of it is, like, the expectations of other people. Where you start putting yourself in a place where you thought you should be at this moment. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, like, I should have this kind of achievements. I shouldn't be struggling with these things. Like, you yeah, know, those kind yeah, of yeah. things. I was like, you know, like, I should be grown. Like, I used to, really, I used to think that by 25, I was going to be married. Yeah. And like married, and I meant like married, like with a career, like that like, kind of married, like, like settled. You think it's set. You know, and that's what yeah. I think is like that's next year. Like yeah. realistically, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. You know, so when you start comparing your expectations to reality, uh, at least in my opinion, sometimes I kind of start getting a little anxious about like where am I going with my life? You know. Yeah. Like that. That's what's talking a lot. How about you? Um, like, you ever feel like you're like not like at the point in your life or not you're not where you're supposed to be? Like you should have been more ahead or. Um, my mom forgets I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> See, I'm down the street. You're the best. I love that. Casa de Jorge. Okay, yeah. <laughs> We're not cutting this out, though. We're yeah, keep this out. So, how do you feel, bro? You feel like you ever, like, like not where you're supposed to be, like, like as far as life or whatever? Um, as far as life, I always think that, thinking about that, I always feel like it depends on where you come from and your environment, like your aspirations in life. For example, at a young age, you have people we look up to, for example, let's say your parents. Your parents are your first inspiration when you see in your life. So you kind of gauge from their experiences where they're at in their life. You could ask them, oh, where were you at that age? But you know, yeah. as time passes on, you have different opportunities. You know, it's not the same world as they were in. But it's like, it depends on what you want to be in life for it because where you're at, where you want to be in life is potentially where you're going to be able to do things. For example, mm-hmm. let's say you want to be, for example, 25 and married. Okay, um, you got to think about, you have, there's certain requirements you need in order to be get married. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you have a, a family, a house established, so then you got to think about your career and stuff like that. So it's, it's really who you are as a person because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. And depending on your environment, you may not want to have the same things. You know yeah, what I'm saying? everybody else. Yeah, so that's what I think. That's my sure. Now, yeah, I, I can agree with that. You know, like, it, the thing is, that in a way i feel like the way you said it is kind of like i don't want to say correct but it's almost like we should probably be looking more on that side because you know like if you think about it 
you can only be as good as you know where your parents have set you up for you, you know what i'm saying like in, in reality so if if you're doing you know at least at least from what i know right like i'm probably doing i think i, I think better than what my parents were at this age you know I mean? at this age i don't think my mom was even in the u.s mm -hmm. you get me so um you know like where i'm at now is it's probably a lot different than where we're, where mm -hmm. they were at you know at that age you know I mean at, at, at their time and then in, and you start to look at you know where you were also i think mm -hmm. that i tweeted out today just because you know i i heard this quote that oh compare yourself to who you used to be you get me mm -hmm. because i think that that when i do that i can see oh i'm actually advancing in life you get me but then when i do what you just said right you start to compare yourself to other people you get me like i start seeing like 18 year olds and 19 year olds like you know out here like you know with a certain amount of money that they can you know do certain mm -hmm. things it makes you question like damn like what the fuck am i doing you know what i'm saying and, and, mm -hmm. and even if i'm not comparing most of the time i just feel like i'm not doing enough anyways you get me that, that, i think you said that's me right yeah yeah well, like, that's I, not me whatsoever. really like you never feel like oh i'm i'm just not doing enough well it depends how you define success or what you find in life well, you know, the thing is that I guess for me is because I look at it like, damn, bro, like 10 years from now, am I going to look back and say, damn, I should have done this or I should have done that. Like I should have been doing, because I guess like, like, if I look back at like back in like, let's say like as far as I could track it back, right? So let's say middle school, high school, if I, if I could track it back to that far, which is, I mean, not really that far, right? Like if I could track it back then, it's like, I wish I would have done things in high school that could have enjoyed better or could have made me a better person to date during that time. Like, mm -hmm. I remember high school, um, I was, I think, like, in ninth or 10th grade. I think I was in 10th grade when um, I had a classmate. He's like, yo, man, you should do boxing, bro. Like, you know, we should we should oh, do it, blah, blah, right? And I remember that for me at the time, I was like, oh, well, I mean, look, it takes this. I think, it, like, you know, they used to talk about it all the time. It's like, oh, it takes, like, about, like, a year or so for you to learn the basics and stuff like that. I'm like... Well, I'm about to, like, you know, graduate, like, in three years. What's the point of me learning how to box? I'm not going to ever learn how to box. So, because for me, at that time, my mind was so stuck on just 12th grade. You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't see past that. And I think that happens a lot in your 20s. Like, you get stuck. Like, you know, like you might say, like, you know, oh, I can't really see past 25. I'm, I can't really see past 29. You know, like, like in, when you're in your 20s, it's All almost right. like we feel like we're in a bubble. But well, what about time? The concept of time? Because life is so short, so you think in your yeah. life, at this point, you should be already somewhere. Because time is so limited. For example, like I always say, life is, comes in chapters. Like at some point, you're supposed to be at a certain point in life. So when you're young, this is the chapter for you to just, you know, figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, you know, you're supposed to already be in school, learning what you're going to do. And then in your 20s, supposedly you're supposed to already be in the chapter where you're building already. Well, not, not your, no, I think, I think in your 20s is when mm -hmm. you're figuring it out. In your thirties mm -hmm. is usually like that time where you should more or less know what you want and you're working towards it, so that in your forties you're already like building something. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like as far and not really building something. In your forties you're already set to like do what it is. So for example, like right. in your twenties you're freaking it out. So my question: mm -hmm. At what point do you think it's the right age for you to enjoy the fruits of your labor? Well, the thing is, you see, that, that's the thing. I don't well, think there's always. A, yeah, like, and I don't think there's an uh, age. I there's a thing. So I think that that's a very general thing. Like, mm -hmm. I think that you can go your 20s, your 30s, your 40s not knowing what you're going to do with your life. Uh -huh. And you figure it out in your 50s. And by the time you're 60, you're super successful. You know, like, nobody, I feel like nobody can tell you where you should be at in your life. You know, like, nobody should have that right anyway. You know, like, nobody true. should be like, oh, you should be this by now. Can we me? use the same uh, argument for judging success? Well, yeah, cause success is very individual. It's not, I don't think yeah. success is a general yeah. thing, you know what I'm well, saying? I think uh, part of the whole idea of success is why I tell you it's my opinion that many times I feel like I'm not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Because I look at my life, and, and many times I look at my life and I'm like, man, I'm really selfish. Like, I, I look at aspects of my life and I'm like, you know, I, I could be investing more time in people. I could be investing more money in people. Because uh, one of the things I always tell you is, to me, like, when I die, I want to leave a legacy for somebody, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, whether that's a son that gets to redeem the things I couldn't do, yeah. right? Have the opportunity that I couldn't achieve. Or whether that is the people I got to an hour around, like friends and family. If I cannot leave them with a lasting impact, then I feel like I failed in life. And so I always feel like I could always do more for people. 
Yeah. That is my struggle. Like, it shows like I yeah. feel like sometimes I get so caught up in the rat race. Yeah. Like of you know you know yeah, yeah man maybe I could, I could I could get this this promotion or maybe I could start looking for a new job or maybe I could start and I, and I get caught up in the whole idea of you know I can start thinking about buying my own house. There's nothing wrong with that. But at least in my opinion, I feel like that's not the success I aim for. Yeah. So if that's not the success I aim for, then anything that's not conducive to the success I hope for mm-hmm. is me wasting my time. It's me failing. Yeah, well, no, but I think that makes sense. Like, if you, the, you know, I think this is the thing for me. I, I think I could agree that we may have certain goals, right? Like when I talk with Jay or I talk with you, like it's like, you know, I think impact matters. Like what, what you said, is, is leaving a legacy, leaving something behind, whether it be for your kids or for the world. I think that that's like something that's like you know important, but we get very sidetracked with everything else going yeah. on. Like for example, you know like you might want a Benz, you know you might want a whatever a new car. You know what I'm saying? You might want this type of house. So you know you're you know what you're trying to do is leave a legacy, but you're also swayed by these yeah. different things that you want. Yeah. And I think I think that's a challenge. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like you know what what truly is that goal? Like that really matters to you, mm-hmm. and like how. How can we actually stay focused on that? Because I, I think, at least for me, like, look, I've had this conversation with him probably, like, I don't know how many different times, right? And with you, about, like, how, and we just having this yesterday, like, how I don't want to get a new car until I know that financially is good, you get me? As far as, like, I'm not going to, like, you know, blow, like, a stupid amount of money on a depreciating, like, mm-hmm. you know, thing. It's not even an asset. Just a depreciating it's a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And and on top of that, I don't want to just get a car just so I can say, oh look, I have this nice car now. You mm-hmm. get me? Like, look at me. You get me? Because then I'm just I'm just doing it for the wrong reasons, yeah. and in the long run, I know I'm gonna regret it. You get yeah. me? Because it's like I've experienced it with smaller things, like you know, with like certain shoes or certain kind of clothing. It's mm-hmm. like I didn't have to spend all that money on this yeah. one thing. You know what I mean? So that's why it, I think it's it's hard. And I always say this. I think I think it's hard just because in the city we live in. You know what I mean? At least for me, because think about it, we live in a in a very flashy city. But I think uh, I think it all brings back not just to the city. I think it brings it back to the idea. At least now is mm-hmm. social media. It's like think about it. Most of the people you're looking at in Instagram that are really big bodies, do they really live in Miami? No, not necessarily. No, but you're looking at them and, and like you know because yeah. social media connects you so closely. Yeah, you're yeah. looking at what some dude in Qatar is living like. Yeah, yeah. Some in Dubai is living you know, like. But I, I, I guess the reason I say that is because think about it like this. Imagine if um, I always think of like Footloose, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know, have you ever seen the movie Footloose? No, it's not a concept. Of that. Okay, you, you ever seen the movie Footloose? Footloose? That's not the movie Footloose. Yeah, sure. Okay, so if you ever seen the new movie Footloose, like the newer version, not the old one, um, this guy like he's like a country, like you know, like the whole movie takes place in like, this very country like place. Like I don't, I don't uh-huh. even know, like like Alabama type thing. Jeez. So like the reason I say this is because okay, for this guy, you know, for these. For these people in general, like these people didn't need like a Benz or nothing like that. You know, like if I'm a car, it's just a car. You know, what I mean, like it's like it's like a truck it was like a big thing. You yeah, know? but that's the thing though. For them, having the big pickup truck is like the big body it's like move. The big but it's just like a different kind of like mindset, but it's the same idea. Is you want the best pickup truck? You want the best Benz? You know, like in a way, it's the same yeah, thing. in a way. It's like for them, it's like you know, man, I got ten cows. I, I guess, I guess, the, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess you come. Like, but I guess, like for them, the bar is lower to say just in general. Well, it's so, think, think about it. Well, you're, you're just saying that because you don't look at the stuff the way they do. like. You don't have the you don't put worth you're in the same things they do. Society. Yeah, but I mean, okay, look. So look at it like this, right? In let's say Miami, right? What's considered? What's the what do you think brand wise is the lowest car, the lowest car brand you can have for you to be considered like, oh that's a dope like luxury car I guess. E class. Think of like three twenty five. E class. C class. Like a three twenty eight. Like a three twenty eight. Like you know. Basically. I think. I think like. I think the lowest, cause I think those are one of the high. I'm talking about brand, not just like C class. I'm talking about brand wise. I think it's probably Infinity. I think it's like, 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 a, like a Cause coupe. if you could get like a coupe, yeah, if you get one of those like 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 even if you get like a G thirty seven that's like brand new and it's a coupe, it's an uh-huh. infinity and it's not like you know like super crazy well, like we, we, luxury. What are the top three brands you see every day? Top three? Yeah. Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. Jesus right? Christ! I was about like, as far as day to day car. Like, oh here, Jesus, here. Uh, Toyota. Ah, uh, I mean Nissan. yeah, he, but no, but you said top though. That I see here, yeah, I would like say, I would say, I would say C class Mercedes though. Uh-huh. You know, probably like three series BMWs, uh-huh. and then and then like eight Audi A fours or something like that. You know, Audi A threes. Like, Jesus Christ! 
I mean, I'm talking about you said top low, like you know yeah, that's probably the best that you'll see around. Just like the intro. No, no, I'm talking about top low. low. I'm talking about just in general. Like oh, in general, like he said, you'll probably see a lot of Honda Civics, exactly. a lot of Toyota. So would you consider, and, like, for example, like when you see something that's not consistent, like when it's not the like the everyday thing, wouldn't you consider it's, that? It's just normal. I, 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 okay, like you know, you don't stand out. That's the thing. You know, yeah. so so it, it really depends on you. I mean, this is what I say. It really does depend on you. Like you know, a lot of people can see a vehicle as a mode of transportation, right? Mm. Take them from point A to point B, which everybody should. But then you got people like me who are dumbasses sometimes oh, and see vehicles as a as a mode of aesthetics that like adds to like your look. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I think I struggle with it a lot because for me it's more of like like we talked about it before. I see like, it's like wearing a watch. Like having like the kind of car you have is almost like the kind of watch that you have or. Or a chain that you have on, or kind of shoes you so have it's on. Like a, yeah, it's like, almost like like an accessory. To, like it adds to like you know your overall aesthetic. So it's like okay, imagine like you know you're dressed fresh in a like fresh old tuxedo, and you come out. I'm talking about like, you know like dapper, right? And you come out of like a like a Toyota or something like that, right? Is it? It just the effect of it doesn't look as good as if you get out of like a higher brand car. But again, this is this is me speaking very superficial and very just looks. You get me like, oh, just how how people perceive. So it's more of what you see is like it's your status in life. Almost. I mean, yeah, in a way, yeah. I, mean, I, I guess. Depending but, on what you have, where we face you. Well, you know, first of all, I think classism is a very real thing, though. I mean, like, of course. if all you see Chris is, is even if it's subtle things, but all you ever see him with is like designer stuff, what are you gonna think about Chris? Like, You're he has not money. Robin. He has. Well, nah, I'm not gonna rob him. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. the pressure, bro. <laughs> but, I mean, I'ma start thinking that yeah, yo, he has money. Like he has money because yeah. all he can afford is like a bunch of. I always look at the haircuts. Why hair? Haircut you have <laughs> Why? because your haircut is into the side, and you always get from like no, no. There's you can tell because when you go to hood barbers, they don't have that. You can't go to for example, wheel barber. Can you get that? No. What this? No. Yeah, you definitely can. Yeah, you, can. you gotta go to Felipe. Super but, wait, so Felipe. Felipe is super gay cut? from like Paris, and he tells you, all right, this is what we gonna do. Felipe is super cut. I can't go to my barber and be like, oh yeah, people. So I tell you, I can't get that. So I what know the hell, bro? you go to like a high status barber. He yes. goes to the hood I go to the most Dominican dude you'll ever find. Make it till you make it. <laughs> alright? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just happen to have great hair. I think it's all like, oh, I don't yeah, know, for yeah. me it's, I don't know man. It's, it, it's something that, like I just think like the city has an effect because, okay, look, think about it like this, right? At this age, right? Or oh. in our youth, right? What are we trying to, I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but I guess like the single guys out there, Try to do impress girls for yeah, the most part. Try to get a it's like we do a lot of things. Guys do a lot of things exactly to like impress girls. So not not necessarily that like every guy, or whatever, but you know. I'll give you sixty five. So if you look at like the pretty pretty girls, uh -huh. okay, you can give that. Let's say really really pretty girls. And that is block. They're gonna well no, don't say that because somebody girl, might be looking. Girl, Wait, girl. can they hear me right now? Yes, there? you see, poster boyfriend here. <laughs> see, look, I, I live right there. Alright, so I mean, I don't know, man. It, it's because it looks like this. Like, like we were just talking yesterday, right? I don't think a girl is either going to want you at the same level that she's on or higher, right? I don't know if that's a general thing. I think that's a, a city thing. Though. I think that's more of a city thing almost every time. Mm -hmm. Most girls that come from towns and, you know, like, like smaller but, towns and more country-like, southern-like things, it's like they're not really, like, they don't care about oh, you make a lot of money and you have a lot of nice things. They care, like, you know, more about, like, real shit, like, your feelings, you know, little <laughs> gay stuff like that, you know, like, stuff that doesn't really matter, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, huh? Disney Channel. Yeah, that, at, le at least, at least from, from what I've experienced from more, like, southern kind of girls that I've met and stuff, they're not so much caught up on, like, the the riches and you know what I'm saying I feel yeah, like if you're yeah cause there's no electricity you live in a farm like, you get what I'm saying but, but exactly like you know when you come up like that yeah. you're not so caught up on like you know these you type of things you still make like the, you still class things just in different categories I mean you you might I just don't think that it's as as, as much as like maybe just different things I, I, I don't know maybe somebody could swim in here you think it's a city thing at all or no no or do you I, think I, living I, in Miami could kind of like make your mind no, you think I, I think I think uh, obviously you're exposed to certain brands, right? Continuously more accessible because you know you have big malls and you have big whatever. But I think the idea of, of comparison, the idea of like somebody having more, is is like universal, mm -hmm. right? Because um, even within the hood, uh -huh. 
You're looking for that dude who's rocking the freshest shoes. I think, well, you, you know, get me? Okay, like, even like, like poverty, like I'm talking about. Yeah, if you go to, no, no, you go to no. country, right? Like a country setting, uh -huh. and you're looking, and somebody's gonna tell you, oh, you know that. Per I just I'll describe it. If you ever been to a country, that person owns ten acres. Mm -hmm. That's that is them exposing how big deal they are. Yeah, yeah. You get me? Oh, the person drives the nicest GMC or whatever. You know, the cultural setting. Yeah, we, we it exposes where you put your worth at, but it's still the idea of. Who has more or who has less? Yeah, but th th this is why I say the difference, uh -huh. real quick. Because, okay, we all live in the U.S. And money is money. No matter where you go in the U.S., money is money. So, if in one place, for you to be classified as fancy uh -huh. is for you to drive the nicest GMC, it doesn't it doesn't come back to, like, Miami. Isn't where GMC be... the place you get pills? No, you're thinking GNC. <laughs> GMC is like a truck. Uh, General, General Motors, Motors company. company. Well, they own a lot of things. Yeah, like Scalier, yeah. Hummer, yeah. You know, all that stuff. So, I mean, so I'm saying, like, you know, in the countryside, if, it, if your standard of, of fancy, or ultimate fancy for you to own this big truck, mm -hmm. you know, that might be like $80,000, but then in the city, the ultimate fancy is what? Like, you pull up in a Rolls Royce, which yeah. costs $500,000. The scale is a very. No, very I, I understand. Huge that. That's why I can give you the benefit in the sense of. Uh, the accessibility to certain brands, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, mm -hmm. you, there's a fit for country living that does not correlate with the fit that you would have in a city expensive living, right? Different like city expensive living, you know, you would you best be rocking everything that is foreign, like whether it's Gucci, whether it's, it's Prada, whether it's Versace, whether it's uh, Louis Vuitton, like it doesn't matter. You're gonna wear something like that that right, accentuates right. your richness. You know, in the country, there's also the practicality of you need jeans. You might want some expensive jeans, but it's not gonna be Balmain. It's not gonna be. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, no. Look, I can, I can agree with that. I can agree that the, the, like the concept is always there, uh -huh. but the scale is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can that, understand. That's that. what I mean. I because, like, look. Okay, th this is what I mean. Like, okay, I feel like, like you know, okay, you know, you're in a position, right, that you can go and you can buy yourself a car right now, right? Mm -hmm. It can be thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Doesn't matter. You can go ahead and you can afford that. Boom. Cool. You know. You know that I can go ahead also, you know, and say, yeah. okay, fuck it, you know, let's buy this thirty thousand dollar car, whatever. But then, you know, I start looking at, you know, like the way I look at finances and stuff is just like, I don't want to spend six hundred dollars a month in because you see the logic. Car. Yeah, exactly. A month for the next four or five years paying off this car just so I can look cool. So it's all about comfortability. No, I want to say comfortability, yeah. but it, it just, it just, I think most people make that. I don't want to say a mistake, but most people jump into that because it is a thing. Like, like think about it, like. You can, they give you money right now, and uh -huh. you pay it off little by little. So uh -huh. you get to enjoy this car, you get to ride around the city, do whatever you have to do, and you get to pay it off little by little. I think that concept is like, is what catches people, because it's like, yo, like, that's awesome. Yeah, I, mean, like, I get to pay it off little by little, which I think it, it makes sense in a lot of things. Like, think about it, you get $100,000 right now, right? And you wanted to invest in real estate, right? You can buy one house right now for $90,000, have it paid off, and every, every rent that you get is going to be straight profit for you. Or you can get that money, put, you know, 20% 20, 20 down on, like, let's say, five houses that cost $100,000, and now you're going to get hella bread from all of them, and then, you know, you, your money's going to pile up a lot bigger than just one house. So, if you use, if you're to use credit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I can see it benefiting in those cases. Yeah. But then, when it comes to certain things, it's not, you know what I mean? But, I mean, that, that's kind of off topic. I mean, as, as far as just, like, you know, these these things that we want and want to obtain, I feel like it's, like, um... A certain fanciness too, especially in the city. Like, I mean, think about it, like anywhere you go out, right? Unless you're going out to like, like if you stay in the hood only. I feel like if you stay in the hood, then you're not gonna really care about if I drive a Honda Civic or if I drive a Toyota. Uh, I, think that much. You, I think you because do. I think staying in the hood is, is a mindset more than an actual physical mm. action. Because it's like you know, even in the hood. You just have a different taste, but you still try to stunt. Like you'll see, you know, whatever, but you'll see them. Like people may not care about what shirt they're wearing, but they care about the Gucci belt, yeah. right? They, you know, they they might not care about uh, where they live, mm -hmm. but they care about the car. Yeah. So I think it's more a concept than anything else. I think it's a concept of of where do you value? I guess where do you va like value fashion or value? Um, damn, that's not the word I'm looking for. Where do you value okay. success, I guess? Yeah, you it's say? like, you know, you're trying to uh, stunt. How are you trying to stunt? Like, how are you trying to stunt? Because your stunt might be different. Like, you know, you're like, I'm not trying to be that guy who accentuates his brand. I'm trying to be more subtle. Okay, you know, all right, for sake of argument, what, let, let's try to come to agreement real fast, right? 
what is success? At least uh, to all of us just now, like at least just to generalize it right now. What's success? Like what, what does success look to you? Right, what would you say? Would you say you are a product of your environment? For the most part, yeah. So for example, where you're from, you know. For the most part, though, that doesn't, I mean, I think you are, but you also have the choice to mm -hmm. change that narrative. Yeah. You get me? Like you can be a product of your, of your environment, but be more than your environment. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Like, I think a lot of rappers have done that. Yeah, like they they still remain like this street dude, yeah. whatever, but they've elevated themselves to understand. Like, I think one of the biggest people is Nipsey Hussle. Like, if you ever hear Nipsey Hussle speak, you know that Nipsey's like a street dude, mm -hmm. cribs, all that stuff, right? But if you ever hear him speak, that's one of the smartest dudes I've ever heard in my life. that would be for Tip Harris. For Ti too. Ti definitely one of those guys yeah. for sure. Like so, so. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, but just as far as success, so like, what what do you consider to be successful? At least for you, like, what do you consider to be like? Okay, that guy's successful. Like, what 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 will make you say that? Oh, that guy's successful. I would say, if he's happy, if he's healthy, and he's comfortable where he's at at the moment. So without knowing, so you wouldn't even updates not in store. So you wouldn't even be prejudiced or nothing. You wouldn't be judged. You you wouldn't judge him just off of his looks or nothing. You're just no, okay. That's it's because like I'm not a very materialistic person because yeah. I don't feel like I think it's like other people have different opportunities, but I shouldn't really define. For example, we we're speaking on people in guitar and stuff like that. Well, they were born with like different opportunities. Maybe you're born with some money. Maybe you're not. Nice. But like what you make with what you have is what's mm -hmm. really worth it. So for yeah. example. He may not have money, but he's healthy. Mm -hmm. He may not have the car, but his family's in school and they're like healthy too. Yeah. So it just depends on your own self values. That's what I would feel like. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really based more on like a moral and... You know what I learned? Like I learned that a lot of the things are... Some things are necessities and other things are luxuries. For sure. For example, so like, yeah, you may want a Benz or a Bentley, but you don't really need one. Not for sure. You just need a car, a functioning car, right? And it just depends. There's nothing wrong with going out there and getting what you want in life. Like if you work hard for it, that's what you truly want, mm -hmm. then go and get it. But that's not really something you need, you know? And yeah. then if it's more of a hindrance than a help, it's not really good for you. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel personally. I like that. that that's, that's a good answer. What do you think? I think success is just uh, accomplish your goals, whatever mm. that is. You know? If your goal was just to get through school and you did that, you're successful. Yeah. If your goal was to, to make a million dollars and you did that, you're successful. If your goal was to provide for your family and you did that, you're successful. Yeah. Because you, you, one thing that Julian says that is extremely true is success is always going to be relative. Yeah. Because you and I may have started the same, but we had different ambitions. We can both be successful and yet you can make a million dollars and I only make 10,000. Yeah. But if we had different goals, then what? if we accomplish our goals, yeah, we're successful. Yeah. You know what? I feel like what you guys are saying is like the, like the, it's like what well, we should all be striving to think like, mm -hmm. you get me? Is that like that mindset that's like, it's facts. But I think that like a lot of people won't ever really do that. Like if your goal was to, like let's say your goal was like, yo, you know what? For every single day that I live, I just, I want to have a roof over my head mm -hmm. and I want to be happy. You get me? Let's say that was your goal for life. You mm -hmm. get me? That, that, that's what you wanted to do. I feel like for you, you're successful. You get me? Mm -hmm. yeah. But you will have the burden on your shoulders, mm -hmm. depending on the kind of person that you have. Other people, not, you know, X, uh, this job that pays you X amount of money. You get mm -hmm. me? Or because you didn't go to college and took full, you know, um, full control of your opportunity, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Or full advantage of your opportunity. Um, because you didn't, you know, I don't know, volunteer, because you didn't, whatever, you know, like, I feel like, you know, depending on the kind of person that you are, is going to determine how you really look at life mm -hmm. and feel about life. Because if you're somebody who could really shake off and say, I don't really give a flying disc what anybody says. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't care what my mom thinks about me or what my friends think about me or what my kids think about me. I just care about what I think about me. Well, and if, not even your kids. Well, because, you know, it, it all depends. Like, you know, I think that um, when we let what other people think about us determine our mood, our life, that cripples us. You get me? Like, if, if you know, you making your mom proud is more important than your own happiness, then you might resent your mom later on, if you think about it. You get me? Because you never really ever focused on you and what you wanted. You only focused on what they wanted. You know what I mean? That's why, like, for that, there's a lot of relationships that, 
you know, your you and your parents, like even though how much successful you may look mm -hmm. to the world, like you may your parents may have pushed you to the edge for you to be mm -hmm. like this big time lawyer, this big mm -hmm. time doctor. But they pushed you so hard, they never showed you love, they never, you know, it was always about not disappointing them yeah. that you end up resenting them. You know, you don't you know, know why? Because they want to live vicariously through you. Yeah, that's definitely, like, for sure. For, for example, sure. like, you would think, I agree with that. Dear, for, let's say you live in a household, right, where your parents struggled so hard to get to a certain point, And then at one point, you know, they have a kid. Mm -hmm. And they don't want you to make the same mistakes as you, but they don't give you the freedom. Yeah, you know, to you make want. your own, yeah. And then, to, for example, like, in my household, they were raised a certain way, like, these are the steps to get to this, mm -hmm. right? And in their time at work, but they don't really see past it. Like that's, that's like the structured path for you to get there. They'd be like, okay, go to school, go to college, get a job. Mm -hmm. And there's so many more opportunities. Like you don't have to go to school. Like if we look in time, some of those were successful people dropped out of college mm -hmm. because they had a vision and they knew they could get that. Like college isn't for everybody. You know, you could waste a lot of time in college and money mm -hmm. and then you could get out of college and your degree means nothing because the way the world is now, there's so many people who have so many degrees that there's not many opportunities that they're going for entry level jobs and then you're stuck. Yeah. So I feel like you have to find for yourself, you know, and if your parents don't agree with that, then they have to realize that you're your own person. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel. No, I, I think that's, that's true though. You know, um, I think a lot of us go through, um, through that process like you know we talked about it here before many times you know like you know you get out of high school the thing to do is go to college you know what I mean the yeah. thing to do is not start your own business the thing to do is not take risks also, the thing to do is be safe mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. and and then I, I think that's a huge problem that we go through like this whole you know be safe thing is I think it cripples us too you know what I mean like it it, cri it cripples us to the point where we don't like you said we don't get to see our own goals and attack those goals you know what I mean we start to see the goals for other people yeah, yeah, yeah. in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and I mean, there's a balance. Obviously, uh, there's times where, you know, if you're a family, you're a, you're a provider for whatever. You know, you chose that life, so you understand that there's limitations to that because mm -hmm. your first responsibility is to provide. For sure. Right. Yeah. So you know, like that, we understand the context. We don't want to be kind of ignorant to say, hey, you know what, well, pursue all you know because we all have you know certain things that we we value more. You know, and that that's yeah. why I would say to me, it's about accomplishing your goals because if your goal is to is to provide for your family. You're willing to sacrifice your your temporary happiness to see your children or to see the people that you care about mm -hmm. excel and have the opportunities that you can't afford for yourself but you can yeah, afford for them, for right? Sure. Like you know stuff like that. The whole idea of um, of success has to come from your your personal desires, your mm -hmm. personal passions, your personal endeavors. You know because uh, you said it. You know if you focus on what everybody thinks or expectations of everybody else, uh -huh. you you won't be the best you, and you can't give them the best you either. Mm -hmm. So you are doing them, uh, you're not doing them a favor, you're doing yourself a favor, right? Because sure. we can't give the best ourselves if we're not the best in, within ourselves. Yeah. So I think that has to be the first thing we should try for. For sure. It's fulfillment within yourself. Yeah, man, you know, I think that, you know, because talking about this, I think that, you know, like, remember, like, in our age, we're just, like, at this point in our lives, we are struggling to just figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, we're yeah. really going back and forth, like, Every what's, day. yeah, like, what's that next move? I'm going to wake up. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, right, like, and, and you know, that, that, that's the thing, like, even for me now, like, it's, it's a thing that, like, you know, doing this more and more allows me to realize I like, I like to do this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And waking up at a certain time because I have to go somewhere is something that I don't like I to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, think about it, you have to wake up early for school, right? Yeah. You have to work up early for work, like, we have to, there's no yeah, choice. No there's yeah. never one day we can say, nah, I just want to sleep in a day. It's like, no, you have to. Because, I mean, to. until you own your own company, you're like, right. I'll go late. I don't exactly. have a choice. And, you know, exactly. I'm all, we'll knock on the door. I think, exactly, I, we'll I think that that's what matters so much for us, that we don't have a choice. And when we, we don't have a choice mm -hmm. is what kind of, like, it sucks. I'm like, when you when you can really say, oh, I don't, I mean, and again. And we, tell my grandma the same thing. No, no, I'll say, okay. You don't give me a and choice. that's because we do have a choice. Mm -hmm. We do. But we really don't. Like, in, in real life, Which, like, I, if I wanted to be like devil's advocate, I would say that that's a good thing. Because in a lot of yeah. areas, choices have actually killed. And, and I was actually just thinking about this when I was driving over here. You know, it's the whole illusion of choice versus, yeah. like, actual choice. And how, you know, some people say, oh, you don't actually have choice in nothing. Like, you know, you think you do, but you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the, the idea of, you know, you have so much choice, you don't end up actually doing anything. You know, when you give a child too much freedom, 
He doesn't end up doing anything. Uh, where, so you know, like in a, in, a, in a way that we need rules, we need responsibilities. Yeah, this guy right here. So the same way it has to do with work. You know, so the idea of like, if you don't have a choice, then you actually go ahead and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But if I give you a choice, then, you know, like for example, people who end up being like, like they were born rich, mm-hmm. right? There's some people that end up like, oh, like people say, oh, you live off your daddy's money, whatever, because yeah. they don't actually have responsibilities, they don't have requirements. Mm-hmm. They have the freedom to do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. in a way, you know, somebody who worked hard for their money, mm-hmm. it, it, like understands the grind, understands the hustle. Believe. They're like, you know what? Yo, this is what money's worth. Whereas if you didn't earn it, you don't know what money's worth. I I completely agree with that. Like that that that's definitely like the other side yeah. of that coin for sure. Cause if if we're not, it's true. Like you know, in in a way, like like you like you said um last week, there's beauty in the struggle. Like mm-hmm. there always is beauty in the struggle. Like the fact that you have to you know wake up at this time and stuff. You know, I think that that pushes you to um to a level though, if you really think about yeah, it, because. Uh-huh. You know, it, it, it starts, especially like the little thing. So we have a job, right? And you have to go to this job or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it is a requirement. But then, you know, I feel like then when you become, if you ever become, right, like your own person, like let's say you have your own business, your own thing, then you have to really be self-motivated and really like be checking yourself yeah. because now it's not a boss calling you saying, hey, like what's going on with you checking you? you get me? Now it's up to you to check yourself. Who does that for you? What do you mean? Yourself? Or well, you well, yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, I, I think that that's the thing, though. Like, for anybody, it has to be your team. You get know I me? Mean? Like, you have to always have a good team around you because you're not always going to be the one to check you. You get know I me? Mean? Like, I mean, like, I think what makes a, a, a great, great group of friends, family members, is that they tell you when you're messing up, when you're doing something wrong. Not not just yes men around you, like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, just so somebody's gonna always tell you yes just so they don't upset you. Like, if you're yeah, doing something wrong, in your pockets. Yeah, yeah, you need somebody to tell you, like, yo, like, bro, this is not you, mm-hmm. stop doing it. And you know, I, I was watching, like, I was watching um today, uh, man, I forgot what this, No Jumper, I don't know if you know what that, that's like another podcast, that's that, hilarious. You, you know that is, right? The oh, ball dude, okay, um, this dude, Boot Game, was on there, right? Oh. Uh-huh. Dude, this guy was like so messed up though. Like he was like doing an interview and he was like, I don't know what he was on. He was on something, right? And the whole time he had like hiccups and he's trying to do the interview. And the interview is so awkward because like the guy's like interviewing him knowing that he is we're like, well, I see he's messed up. He's like this. He's like, yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, you could tell he's so messed up. And, and I'm looking at this guy as he's leaving. Right? As he's leaving, he almost falls over and everything. You know, his, his, the people around him. He's like two girls, two guys, right? Mm-hmm. And they, these guys look like freaking clowns. And, you know, they're helping him out. And, I, and I'm looking like, bro, the people that you have around you are not telling you that, yo, you got to slow it down, you got to stop. That's that's what messes up a lot of people. Like, you know, if if you're somebody who has a platform or, or can have some type of influence, you start having all these people around you and all you want to do is party and nobody uh-huh. wants to tell you like, yo, it's time for you to get your shit together, stop doing well, this. You know why? Because they're along for the ride. Yeah. At some man. point, if you do that, the riot stops. And, but that's what I mean. Like, you see, in, in those scenarios, and not necessarily just for that, but in those scenarios, that's why you need to have the a, a right team around you because you're not always going to be there to check yourself. You might just, you know, you might get be, be, yeah, and you get called along your daily yeah, yeah, yeah. tasks that you don't get told. You get me? But we need those people to be like, yo, bro, I think you're tripping, bro. Like, I think you, you got to calm down. You got to start evaluating, mm-hmm. you know, because... That I think that that's the number one thing that's gonna matter at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, like For it's sure. really the people around you. Kind of, at the end of the day, like, we can talk about goals and all this stuff. But you know, we live in a world that before modern anything, people. We just had people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People kept people alive. Essentially speaking, you know what I mean? Like we all learn from each other. We all look for comfort in each mm-hmm. other. We all look for for whatever. You know what I mean? Even emotional support, uh, physical support, whatever. You know what I mean? We all look for stuff in people. So I think that's the number one thing. Like you know, people. Around you are always gonna be the most important thing over the money. You get me? Like I rather have all the people around me that I love healthy and in good shape than for me to have a million dollars, be a billionaire, and be alone because then there's no point. Like imagine you go be in the island and you're a billionaire, but what are you gonna do? Like nothing. You don't have nobody around you to well, share nothing with. That's why I've, like, I've I've seen some of the most successful people I've seen interviews and they always like like they say oh what's more important to you and it's not their money and so they always say their happiness their family. Yeah. And that, I never that. really got that until I seen that some of the, for example, look at Steve Jobs. He mm-hmm. made a bunch of money, but at the end, he wasn't happy. Yeah, he was. It was it just keep, literally like, the life left him. Mm-hmm. And like the, you see documentaries like him and his family bonding. Yeah. It was, it wasn't you know great. At the end, you know, it really matters. 
Yeah, yeah but you gotta you gotta have perspective. Like you know, one of those guys that that has accomplished millions and has found the joy in everything, but is the the guy from Microsoft, right? Mm-hmm. Bill. Bill Gates. Bill, man. Bill Gates has a, a philanthropy. Like this dude and him and Nancy have like dedicated themselves to making people's lives better, mm-hmm. and in that they find the fulfillment, that they find the joy. You know, yeah. Microsoft was a tool. Microsoft was a way of profit. But they've also used Microsoft to uh, to give like free computers away in yeah. Africa and and give free water and give a bunch of other stuff. So People. it's like you know, I, I think that's how it has to be. It's like you know, the your your biggest profit is not the money. But it's the people you can help and the people who you can surround yourself with, mm-hmm. right? Because at the end, sure. even even ideas that give you money came from people. Mm-hmm. You get me? The, no, the system and the infrastructure you built came from people. Mm-hmm. The language came from people. The arts came from people. So more than anything else, the people themselves are the biggest value. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it does come down. I heard that so many times, like, you know, when, when you build wealth, right? You know, you need to figure out a way to also give. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like, give more because, you know, just, just you know, there's so much, like, I, I would think about it like this, too. Like, it's crazy. Tupac said this a long time ago. He said, um, it's crazy how, you know, there's people out here in the streets, you know, homeless, dying of hunger, whatever, and there's people, you know, winning the lottery for millions of dollars, right? And then we could get into different types of intersections, right? Like, oh, those people had a choice or... You know, some people circumstance, whatever. But in a way, like it, it's true. Like I, I think that it's crazy how much money there is in the system in general. Mm-hmm. You get me? That there's so many people that they might not be eating because they're lazy. They might not. Yeah, you know, I understand. There's, mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's circumstances. I, I completely understand. That, you get me? But I guess just to get to like maybe what he was trying to get at, just that there's so much money, there's so much wealth that there really shouldn't be people in that situation. If you get me, like they. They can't be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If, if somebody way, could get them out, them out, exactly. There's a way of helping them out. You know, so it's it, it it's true. At the end of the day, like it's the earth is gonna always revolve around people. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, people that's gonna be like even like think about, even in your own business, it's still about people. Yeah. You know, it's always gonna be about what you know, like, whatever you're selling, you gotta convince somebody that yo, this is for you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is good for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to continue to have them continue yeah, for sure. back. So I mean, like in this whole array of life man is is i guess like for the younger people coming up like whoever could like i hope somebody younger sees this video right Mm -hmm. because you know you might get something out of it um i honestly can't wait to look back at this when i'm like 35 or in my 30s right and be like damn that's what we're talking about exactly you know and then and for somebody younger to kind of see like okay like you know what what things get like because i feel like in, in especially like around this time it's like you're just all over the place. Yeah. You know I mean? And we make a lot of mistakes with money. We make a lot of mistakes with decisions that we that we take. You get me? Because we're just learning. You get yeah. me? Like if, if I like to look at it like you know, once you jump out of high school, you start going to college. That's when you start to live life. Like literally, like, once you're out of high school, out of that bubble, yeah, and you start to you're, get you're a less job. Shoved it. Exactly. You know, you start to get a job. You know what it's like to work for 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 somebody or work with people. You know what it's like to pay bills. And you know what I'm saying? Like that's when you start to learn more about life. So I think that, you know, like right now that we're like all shaken up, I guess like, you know, we have to kind of like slow things down and really mm-hmm. just look at like, where were you a year ago? Yeah. Where were you two years ago? Are you doing better? And that's, that's the only thing that should matter. You, know, you should constantly like, you know, don't compare your life to other people. You're just constantly like, how can I, like, you know, where was I before? Where am I now? I, th- I, th- I think that's that's essentially. I would you. actually say that that is the the first key. I would say there's another key. Mm-hmm. I said that you know you always have to say, at least in the way I try to approach this, you know, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be, right? Yeah. So you the whole reflection of going back and looking at you know I'm better than I used to be, mm-hmm. but also setting yourself to be better. Like life is a journey, but in the journey there should always be growth, yeah. right? So we don't settle with who we are right now, but we do find contentment. Right, like I'm not where I used to be, but I'm getting better every day, you know, and that I think that should be the goal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sir. I feel like with success comes failure, and you have to learn to yeah. fail. I, I like that you said yeah. that. That's yeah. very important yeah. because, like, I always look like, especially when we're younger, we have more liberty to fail because we have more time to improve. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel, and there's so many people. I always look at. Especially in my life, somebody who wants to have the goals of being a millionaire or something like that, I always look at the people 
who already walked the way I'm trying to get there. And they failed multiple times. There's just multiple examples of people who chased their dream and they didn't get it the first try. Yeah. So I feel like you have to fail sometimes in order to grow and to learn because if you succeed all the time and when you do fail, especially so late in the game, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So you have to fail yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Grow. That's a big key for sure. I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that that's mad deep because, you know, if, if, if you know, it's, it's almost like we have to start looking at life real, like, there is no, there is no real losing or failures, right? It's no, either you win and or you learn. It's ups and downs. Yeah, or, or ups and downs, like, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, I, I like that, because, you know, you know, when you, when you fail at something, it's really just an opportunity for you to look and say, what did I do wrong, how can I get better, and keep going, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's true, you know, However many times that you fall down, the only thing that matters is how many times you get back up. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that you end up with that. So, we're going to end it on that note. That's just airplane pass real quick. This is at least a sixth airplane. Yeah, if we made this a drinking game, we'll be done right now. <laughs> we will be done right now. <laughs> play, right. play, We're going to talk. Alright, so thank y'all for tuning in once again to I'm Down. Uh, we appreciate your views. We appreciate your support. Comment down below. Tell us what you think. Tell us if uh, we didn't cover something or something that you thought about that you want us to uh, discuss uh, more broadly. Let us know. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.